What's happening? Welcome back to the channel. I am Nick here with Ryan and Ty. What up? Time to get into some Opeth. Hmm. There is no way you guys have heard of this group. Oh. <laughs> uh, they are a Swedish progressive metal slash rock band from Stockholm. Formed in 1990 by lead vocalist David Isberg. It could be Iceberg, but... Mm. Iceberg would be better. I'm going to say Isberg. No. <laughs> what do you guys think of Sweden? What do you think of? Like a Swedish, Swedish fish. fish. Okay. <laughs> okay. We know. That's right. What about the Swedish Alps? Nope. No. <laughs> no. Swedish chocolate? Swedish masseuse. <laughs> what about That's the Swedish masseuse? <laughs> what about the Swedish chef? No. No. <sighs> <sighs> Swedish meatballs? Isn't that the thing? Yeah, it is a thing. IKEA? See, aren't we all, we're all the same. Me and Ryan are a whole other yeah. universe. We know Swedes a whole different way. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, and Swedish women. Just saying. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the group has been through several personnel changes, including the replacement of every single original member. Oh, wow. Notably, Isberg in 1992. Michael Ackerfeldt has been Opeth's frontman and primary songwriter since Isberg's departure. The band rarely made live appearances supporting their first four albums. But since conducting their first world tour after 2001, they have led several major world tours. Just like with Gojira, this is a band that gets a lot of respect from the um, older metal generation and the newer generation. Uh, a lot of newer metal groups have cited them as an inspiration. They made 13 albums, and uh, they need to update the record sales because the one I looked at said of as of 2009. So uh, somebody get on there and change <laughs> it. Be a good Samaritan. Uh, so we're going to start with Ghost of Perdition. Uh, again, like, this is the typical starter song on Reaction Channel. It's like, I get it, but, you know, I really do think it's, like, probably the best starter. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, you know, they're starters for a reason. Ty, do you know what perdition means? No. I've heard the term. In Christian theology, it is a state of eternal punishment and damnation into which a sinful and unpenitent person passes after death. It's where one is in a stage of eternal suffering and damnation after being banished to hell. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You've been exiled. So there you go. If you've ever heard the tome Road to Perdition, yeah, that's where it comes from. Um, I think that was actually a movie, too. Mm. A good movie. Uh, this is from the eighth album, Ghost Reveries, released in 2005. And this track is the opener. So let's do it. This is Opeth, Ghost of Perdition. Is it 
October. Oh, man. <laughs> Ready to go there. Doesn't it just sound like you walked into a heart of the house, Ryan? Yes. Your oh, hell. Tour. Oh, oh, yeah. Hell. <laughs> so I walked into it. <laughs> yeah, you can, uh, can you tell this is a little proggy? Oh, yeah. That's I've already changed my head bob. To twisting and turning riff. And, man, does this bring the terror with the keys. Ty, that is a yeah. Mellotron. <laughs> so that's essentially like an advanced synth. Um, it's one that can mimic sounds more easily, you know, than most from back then. Basically, it's it's basically like the mime of keyboards. <laughs> Ryan, you get the harsh growls, and these are great growls, by the way. <laughs> no matter if you like them or not, they're like insanely good growls. Uh, and then he comes in with the clean. Which uh, we have not expecting that. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of that. It's the same guy. Yeah. yeah. That was very unexpected. <laughs> I'll say. And uh, I do like the swooping bass. Uh, I call it a swoop, though. Like that. Um, but man, the drumming, just like knifing through this. It, like, if you don't really pay attention, like, this could easily go over your head. Like, I'm, I'm going to run it back, but just listen to these drums. Um, on that quiet build, he goes from the toms. Da, 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 da. And then he goes snare, ba ba, cymbal, ba ba. And it's like that. It's just like such a great understanding of release and tension. It's just like having a super high IQ. Uh, and then he has that kick feel to boot. Ba, 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 ba. He goes on the top of the cymbal when the keys rise up and when they, when they go back down, he starts going hard on the fall. It's just, it's just brains. It's just smart. Can you hear the brains talk? I hear the brains all right. It's like the high brains. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Toms. Snare. Devil cracked the earthly shell for told she was the one. The hope into the room and said you have to live before you die.
Good. <laughs> Get that ghost out of there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how would you describe this song, Ty? I don't even know. <laughs> I barely know what's going on right now. <laughs> After that first, you know, harder part, then they bring in the acoustic. Um, and it's almost like you're floating, enchanting, I guess. Spiritual. Be, yeah. Be a good way to put it. Kind of dreamlike, Ryan. Mm-hmm. But I just think this, uh, this just sounds ex- very expressive. Uh, very mournful, you know. Atm- it goes from atmospheric to emotional to prog to groove oriented, uh, death metal, and then back to enchanting. You know, it's like all of these emotions are just woven into the story. You know, this is like reading an ancient dark novel. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you just can't help but be it's a relic invested. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the calamity and the presentation will at least interest you. I mean, if you, if you like instruments, like, this should at least interest you. And that's something that everyone wants a piece of. You know, you can't make an epic without it. Don't shy away from your ideas. Just be confident and let it fly. Just, just pull up from half court, basically. I mean, that's what I do on this channel. Like, more than half the time, like, I'm, I'm sure people have no idea what I'm talking about. But I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and that's all that really matters. You know, I just, I just love all the emotions in this. This is so hard. There you go, it's creeping. <laughs> I kind of like it.
That is very ghostly. Yeah. Power metal kind of uh, classical. Like, I could just see the maestro. <laughs> Michael came in it. Yeah. I mean, what else can you say? There's just, like, so many memorable moments in that song. When I think of this song, like, I don't think of one theme. I think of several themes. There's not one premiere hook, but the song is premiere. <laughs> you know, in these long, epic songs, you need variety. You know, I just think that it has tight performances, uh, several mood shifts, and by the time it's over, I just feel like it's profitable. You know, I could see how this would be too rich for a first-time listener. Like, I mean, it was for me. It's just a lot to take in. You know, I, I could probably shave a minute, minute and a half all this off of this song. You know, that's that's just my personal taste. But in the end, like, this doesn't feel exhausting. It doesn't feel excessive. You know, it feels like a win to me. You know, if you have this length. It's, it's hard to make it good and want to listen to it again, and, and this feels like a win to me. Um, you can hear the prog, yes, Rush, even some Pink Floyd in there, countless others. You know, it's it's like prog mixed with some, some goth, you know, classical and death metal as well. I just feel like if a gargoyle had a playlist, like, this would be his number one song. <laughs> uh, so it's a wonderful composition, uh, performances, expression. Uh, you can see why this is a classic for this genre. I mean, it is a lot, so it's hard for, you know, me to listen to it right now. Uh, but it got better, honestly, as the song got on. As soon as it started, once that, that screen drop came in, I was like, nope, this is not going to be it. I already knew. But and then the voice came in, and I was like, whoa. He actually has a really good voice. Um, obviously, I don't love the screaming parts, but I totally get it. And, you know, this might be one of the ones that, you know, that actually has Scream that I would actually add to the playlist. So, well, it's this, mixed in. Yeah. You guys always say you like it mixed in. Well, and sometimes the Screamers, like, they go to their voice, and it's just not that great. Like, they, they're fine, but they're not, sure. like, a great yep. vocalist. This guy's actually got a really good, like, singing voice. Yeah. Like, if he just sung and, and just didn't well, scream at all, they he'd have, probably still be popular. They have songs like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to hear them. <laughs> yeah. But I, this is Fringe playlist. I want to hear it again. Okay. But the, the drums were hey. fantastic, and there's a lot of components in it that I do like. I will take that. Yeah. I, I will take that as a win. <laughs> but you have to admit, though, like, his growls are, like, one of the best we've they're, had on the yeah, channel. Yeah, they're very uh, uh, pig squilly. I mean, bit. great growls. It's like it's fringe playlist for me as well. There's like certain parts I want to put in the playlist. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the playlist. <laughs> so I think the first growl, you know, growls were caught me off guard. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you got off used the to bat. It, though. You know, there wasn't no really, like real in intro. But um, the the second, like the later growls, I actually liked the growls. Yeah, yeah. I told you I liked the melodic growls yeah. where you can actually, you know, I'm not saying you couldn't hear what you're saying, but it's more of like more clear. It's a it's, clear growl. Yeah, I like it, those. I like that. That's not that bad to me. It's not a growl that's inaudible. Right. You know, it, it is more thicker, but, like, if you're looking at the lyrics, you're like, okay, yeah, he is he is actually saying exactly. that word. Yeah, yeah, so I actually like that part. And there was one part where the drummer, what do you call it when the, when the, when the guy goes across the drum? The Hawaii 5-0. 
That was so good. Yeah, he did yeah. that, but then he turned into the double bass at the end. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was fire. I've never heard that. Yeah. He did all that, and then he turned to the double, like the double bass. That's all. Oh, that's fire. And then, yeah. and then the transition into the uh, it was yeah, the, the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that part. That transition was fire. As you can see, I choked up on it. I couldn't even say it. You <laughs> got the ghost in you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that part was fire. See, there were, there's parts that I like. So I think his overall song, I actually like the song. Yeah. It's just French playlist. I don't know. I might have to hear it again. Mm -hmm. I think if I get I get past that first part, I like the rest of it. Literally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Instruments great. The, the, the solos were great. So yeah, I liked it a lot, actually. You, you come around to that first part because it's like, it's so unexpected. It just comes out of the gate. <laughs> and, and I like that because it turns into something completely different. Yeah, yeah, that was, was like, obviously intentional. It was like two different songs. I was listening to two different songs. They yeah, just mixed and, them. yeah, they put, went back and forth on the song. I was hoping he was going to turn it into one of his verses where he was growling a little bit, then he sang, went back to the growl. I thought that'd be, it's like the song got to, possessed at times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the ghost thinking. took over every Yeah, the, when he yeah. growled, that's when the ghost was talking. And then when he was singing, it was yeah. the person that was being possessed. Saying, help me. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it just, it just felt like you were on your own in a haunted house, and like <laughs> you actually saw some like beautiful things things inside the house but every once in a while like you know yeah. it was coming to get you yeah yeah you know what i'm saying good spirits and i also spirits. liked how it, whenever you knew when the the i guess you would say the ghost was coming back because the growl was in the back yeah he was it's like he was coming towards you yeah i like that effect that was a, and then he they, he echoed his growls a yeah. little bit yep. i was like mm, i kind of like that too i like yep. how they echoed the growl it was like oh, that's kind of different too i never heard that either and then in the the kind of groove section um where they, they put some type of like filter yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, it sounded like uh, uh that sounded Swedish. Yeah. The, the 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 rhythm of it sounded uh Oh, okay. The, like the rhythm of how he was saying it. It yeah, sounded yeah, yeah. more I want I want to say Swedish, but it was more foreign. It was more okay. I don't really, I can't really put my finger on what it really sounded but it's more like England or Swedish or I don't know, it's just the way he was saying it. it might remind European? Me of, you're, well, European? European, maybe, yeah. Yeah, European is what Yeah, that's, it gave me a different uh, vibe. So I think that's kind of cool, too. I gave you the definition of perdition. I don't know if that's exactly what the song's about. I just know that it's it's about possession of some sort. Yeah, well, I can hear you. <laughs> well, he said something about the uh, something, in my, something in his chest, or in the chest. Yeah. So I just thought every time he growled, the ghost was coming out of the chest. It was singing. Yeah, man. yeah so if, that's what I got. If you're a lyrical person, like... This is a story that will make you think, for sure. <laughs> Especially towards the end, like these questions: Would conviction fall in the shadow of the righteous? I was like, that is a fire yeah. line. Right I there. honestly was not paying attention to the lyrics. I mean, I was reading yeah. them, but really, I was just listening at the music. Yeah, th this is like you, you look at this afterwards. Yeah, like this is icing on the cake yeah. type of thing. Mm -hmm. An A plus song in my book. Um, I, I think it's not perfect, but no song is perfect. Excellent song, and Opeth will be back. So we'll see you then. That's it, guys. Don't forget to drop a like. And as always, please tell us your views. Thanks for subscribing. Hitting that bell. Peace, Peace out. out.